Hello everyone and welcome back. Today you join me in my E85 BMW Z4, the replacement of my W204 C63, which is quite fitting really because the car I was looking at buying before my C63 was a BMW Z4M Coupe, but obviously I opted for the C63 instead because I couldn't find the right Z4M Coupe for me and the C63 ticked all the boxes. So we've kind of gone full circle really now being in this three litre BMW Z4. So first and foremost, why did I buy this car? Well, in the last video, I said that I had a budget around £4,000 and as many avenues you can explore in terms of £4,000 of an excellent car as a choice. But this is one that ticks a lot of boxes and there's more to it than just for it being £4,000 in excellent value. If any of you know me from a long-term viewer, you might know that I had a Porsche Cayenne Turbo and I was currently doing like a little series where I wanted to buy cars from my childhood racing games. And that one in particular is Project Gotham Racing 2. Now, this car falls under the category of convertible and there was a convertible series and there was many cars in there which I was very fond of. And the three that I was very fond of were the Honda S2000, the Porsche Boxster S, and obviously this, the BMW Z4 3 litre variant, which is exactly what we're in today. But with prices being quite sky high for the Porsche Boxster S and the Honda S2000, it is not within budget. Let's just do a little pull here. Nothing around me, build the revs. Milk spin. That is so addictive. I can never ever forget all of that. It genuinely puts a smile on my face. My C63 did the exact same thing, but this is another level because it's so rewarding to rev it out because you got an incentive to do so with it being naturally aspirated. And obviously you get the manual experience and it sounds so good when it's on song right atop of the RPM band. However, I'm glad that the other two were out of budget because I am completely won over by this car. I know initially I wanted the Z4M Coupe, which is obviously top dog, but if I'm honest, this is actually more than enough, especially for our roads, which are narrow and bumpy. I think I'd send this into a tree if I had the 3.2 S54. I think this three litre is more than enough. Maybe the three litre SI at a stretch, but to have fun, you really don't need more than this. As I was saying earlier with the game that I used to play, these were the sort of cars I grew up with when I was juvenile, mid like mid 2000s. These were the sort of cars that I always aspired to one day own and maybe just one day I could own one. And here we are, now we are here because there's such a thing called depreciation exists. You can now pick up one of these for a list of as three and a half thousand pounds, which I think is absolute tremendous value. And when these were new, I think these were around 30 odd grand or so. So you're effectively getting this for a tenth of the price. And the same story was with my Porsche Cayenne Turbo. I think this price back in 2004, whenever it was, I think on this paper it's about 72,000 pounds. And I think I picked up for about seven grand. So yeah, another car, tenth of the price, mid 2000s. I don't know if that's the case for most cars in that era, maybe not the exotics, but even cars like the Porsche, uh, not the Porsche, the Bentley Continental GT. I mean, I don't know what they cost when they first came out, but you can now stack them up for, I don't know, 15,000 pounds or so. And obviously that might be a ropey one high mileage and might need some maintenance, but it's crazy how much you can get these days in that sort of era of car. Anyway, what is it like to be inside the Z4 and what is it like to drive? And I briefly want to touch upon a topic that I spoke about in the last video, and it is the simplicity of the interior. It's really refreshing to be somewhere where there's not just like technology and screens everywhere. And I, I, I actually really like it. And I know to some people it might not appeal to you, it might be a bit boring, but I actually really like it. It is rather refreshing to see just the simple ergonomics in the car and that is it because it essentially is a sports car and what else do you need we've got a lovely small steering wheel which is quite charming but it's not just small in size it's actually thin like in the rim area as well and it's actually quite nice and tactile to hold with like most modern cars you get quite chunky and fat steering wheel so it is quite nice to have a small but thin engaging steering wheel to use and being inside the car well 
I know it's a small sports car and two-seater, but it doesn't actually feel that cramped in here. It's actually quite spacious and quite relaxing to be in. And in terms of it having a massively long bonnet, which a Z4 is renowned for, you don't actually really notice it. I mean, I can't actually see all of it looking over like this. But, I've, yeah, yeah, it doesn't feel intimidating or anywhere near as daunting as I once thought it would be to drive on the UK roads. It's actually perfectly normal to use on a daily basis. One of the centerpieces of this E84 Z4 though is most definitely the engine up front, which is the masterful M54 engine, which is a inline six Natchi aspirated six cylinder engine. That puts out around 230 horsepower and I think around 300 newton meters of torque. And I think that will dish out the 0 to 60 in around 5.9 seconds. And that is all fed through the rear wheels and courtesy made it to this lovely six speed manual transmission gearbox i do apologize for my ropey gear changes that i did mention before i'm not quite mastered the rev matching thing yet but i am learning so this being the three liter variant of the m54 this is the range topping you could get in a z4 at the time of release you could also get a 2.5 but yeah they obviously then entered the three liter si variant uh, which is the n52 i think and then obviously the s54 and the z4m coupe the 3.2 inline six came about but this three liter variant is really really all you need and it is so fruity not much going on down below low end torque because uh, it hasn't really got much but once you start getting it to around 4,000 rpm and onwards it really does come on song and it is absolutely masterful in the way it sounds Let's do a rev match here, see if we can do it. Yes! And when you get it right with the rev match and hear that beautiful sound come on, on song, it is absolutely addictive and I cannot get enough of it. It is so endearing. We've got some twisties up here. Oh, that's a bit of ropey one. Let's try again. Yes. <laughs> this is actually so joyous. I've driven down here my C63, but this is so much more fun. And because it's not actually that powerful in the grand scheme of things compared to like my C63, you can enjoy these roads more because it takes longer to get up to speed. So it's a sensation lasts much much longer i want to do that all over again and that is something which i feel is very very important is actually be able to use and enjoy all the power it's all right having all the ponies in the world but if you can't use them then what's the point of going trotting That is something that I really am enjoying in this car though, is just being able to fully extract and use all of the power that's given to me and not have to feel like I'm gonna wrap it around a tree or worry about using it to the ragged edge because it just hasn't got enough power to send you into trouble. But it has got enough to put a massive grin on your face, which is clearly being um, shown here. I cannot put it into words how much this is making me smile so much right now. Why don't I get one of these much sooner? These are brilliant. In terms of the few things that I'm not overly fond of or just like little niggles that I have, well, one of them I think it could comes down to lack of experience in manual cars and maybe this car in general, but I cannot fathom how to go from first to second without sending my head through the windshield it's it's a little bit notchy this gearbox i'm not sure if that's a general consensus of other z4 owners if you know then please do enlighten me but yes yeah, so i am struggling a little bit to especially first and second have a nice smooth transition as opposed to one that sends me through the windshield yeah it's a bit of a notchy gearbox but it's still equally rewarding getting through the gears 
Other things to note, well, I think this car is probably because it's a sports car and I shouldn't really make a comment on it, but it is a bit on the firm side and any imperfections on the roads, this car does seem to follow them quite a bit with the steering, which can be a bit wayward at times. Uh, I don't know if that is just the way the Z4 is calibrated onto the road or just how stiffly sprung it is. Um, but yeah, that is another thing to note. Another thing to note are these door bins. They are borderline pointless and they're such an awkward angle to get to. Um, so there's no chance of getting any like drinks or down there, but luckily you do have a cup holder to do such a job. The door bins do, however, excel at one thing and they can actually accommodate a penguin bar. Overall though, I am genuinely besotted with this car and I actually love it so much. It's everything I expect it to be, plus so much more. So if there's anything that you know about this car that I should look out for, any problems or any preservative maintenance or any modifications I should do to this car, then please do let me know down below as I'd love to know more about this Z4 ownership. I want to sink my teeth into this car because I really have gelled this car quite a lot. So I'm going to leave that there for now and I really do thank you very much for watching and if you could, it would go a long way if you could like this video and also comment down below what you'd have bought for around £4,000. Would it have been a sports car or something completely different? I'd love to know. So thank you very much for watching and until next time, bye for now.